Hi, my name is Rolinda and I'm the Director of Educational Resources and OER Specialist at UA Costot. You've probably heard everyone talking about the Educational Resource Center, better known as the ERC. It's the number one spot outside of the classroom that helps you be successful. The ERC includes several different departments all rolled into one, but one of our main components is Kimball Library. We have over 8,000 books available for research, and more conveniently, we have over 200 online databases that you can access for free. The college pays for these resources so that you have access to credible research without paying a dime extra. Some of our most used databases include Credo, ProQuest, and Academic Search Elite. We even have Sanal, especially for students in medical programs. If you're not familiar with using online databases, then this is the video for you. We're going to walk through using the ERC databases. You'll need to log into a secure page using your five-digit student ID number and your eight-digit date of birth. If your birthday begins with a zero, like zero 09 for September, you may need to omit the zero. So you'll go to ERC databases on the ERC webpage and select online databases. I already have a number, so I'm just going to submit request. And this is the secure page with all the databases listed. Once you're logged in, you can see all of them and you'll need to know where to look to find subject-specific resources. Ask someone at the ERC for help if you're not sure where to start. We often recommend starting with Credo or ProQuest as a guide. I'm going to walk you through the process of searching a database. It's similar to using Google or YouTube to search for what you need. How many times have you looked at YouTube to learn how to do something? Probably a lot. I'm going to start with one database and show you how narrow, narrowing search terms can be useful. If you don't know anything about keywords and Boolean operators, then you can try just, I'm going to select ProQuest, try typing in your research question. And I'll show you what happens. So let's say my research question is, is the shroud a statement on the subservient role of women in a patriarchal society. Now, what I'm researching is Penelope Shroud in the Odyssey. Uh, a little bit of Greek mythology. Uh, that's one of my favorites. So, that is my entire question. Now, I'm just going to search and see what we come up with. Okay, we have over 2,000 results. You can see that right over here. That's a lot. And when I just glance at some of the results, um, they're not necessarily about Penelope in the Odyssey. So I'm going to narrow my search terms to try to find the most pertinent information from some scholarly sources. By using specific keywords, and using filters to narrow results, I won't have to wade through everything. I'll use the Boolean operator AND to look for Penelope AND the shroud only. So let's take this out and let's say Penelope AND the shroud. And we're searching. Oh my, we have almost 4,000 results. That, that is too many. Uh, I don't have time to read the abstracts for 4,000 articles. So it looks like I really need to find a way to narrow that even more. So I'm going to use some specific search filters and specific keywords. First, I'm going to select full text. And I'm going to search scholarly journals only right now. So I'll just click on that. And... I'm going to select the last five years to get the most relevant information. Now, I'm going to use 
a Boolean operator again, but I'm going to change my keywords a little bit. Um, I'm going to say Penelope and the Shroud and Patriarchy. Seven results. Now that's more like it. Uh, I have time to look at seven, seven different resources and see if there's something that I can use in my research. So it looks like the, the first resource listed, it looks promising. Uh, it's about Atwood, but I'm going to select the abstract so I can see what it's about. Okay, I see uh, Odysseus, Penelope. This looks like it may be useful to my research. So I'm going to go ahead and click on full text. And I have a couple of choices right here. I can download the document and save it, or I can print it. And there's the print. Um, I think I would probably download it and save it uh, rather than printing it because I'm still not certain if I'm going to need this in my final research, but it's definitely something I want to look at. While I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and see if there's a site button uh, to make it a little bit easier when I prepare my bibliography. Right over here to the top right, I see a site button. I'm going to select that. And now, there are different choices. It looks like we're set on APA 6. This is a humanities paper, so I'll be writing it in MLA style. And the latest edition of MLA is the ninth edition, so I'm going to look for that. We've got a lot of APA, Chicago. Here we are, MLA. We've got about three choices for the ninth edition, but I'm going to just select basic. And it has cited the work for me. So I can click on copy. And I've already got my bibliography page ready, so I'm just going to paste it. I can delete that. Now, I would go somewhere like Purdue or the ERC LibGuides to double check uh, the citation and make sure it is accurate. But for now, I'm going to show you what you need to do. One, if you paste it like this, you'll still need to fix the font. See how the font changes? So this is Times New Roman 12 point font. So I'm just gonna go here and I'm going to put it on 12, and I'm going to fix the uh, shade of the font there. And we already have the hanging indent, so everything looks good. And again, I may not use this article in my final paper, uh, but if I do, I'll, I'll be able to cite it correctly. Uh, this is a bibliography, which means I'm going to go ahead and keep up with everything that I'm looking at. And when I decide what I'm using and what goes in the actual paper, then I'll prepare a works cited page with only those sources. So I'm just going to get rid of that. So, get creative in your research. Experiment with different operators and different keywords or phrases. Don't limit yourself to using just one database. Remember, there are over 200 databases right here, and they're free. Of course, ERC tutors are also on hand to help. If you're having trouble finding sources, just talk to a tutor they may be able to steer you in the right direction. And on the ERC website, let's get back to that. I want to show you something. There is a document right here 
It says how to access ERC databases. And there's another one that says researching through academic databases. I'm going to select that one and just show you everything you need to know about research is right here as far as using the databases. It even talks about Google Scholar versus Academic Search Complete. So if you'll use that, it will help you a lot. And remember, everyone at the ERC is ready to help. So all you have to do is visit your campus ERC and let us know you'd like some help researching.